What is good, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another review. This is not your average sneakerhead, Tony Ramsey, and today we're taking a look at the Yeezy 350 V2 in the Sand Taupe colorway. Now before we jump into the review of this sneaker, if this is your first time here, thank you guys for watching. Also please consider leaving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel as that does help YouTube channels grow. Uh, we just passed the 1,000 subscriber mark so we will be doing a giveaway for, uh, for reaching 1,000 subs and I should have details about that giveaway in the coming weeks, hopefully by uh, New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2020. So stay tuned for that, watch any videos we have coming up so I'll give you guys details about that giveaway. Really do appreciate everyone that's been leaving comments, uh, thumbs ups and watching the videos and subscribe to the channel. All your support has definitely helped the channel grow and I really do appreciate you guys. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump to details about this sneaker. Now the Yeezy 350 V2 in the Sand Soap colorway released on, I want to say December 19th for a retail price of $220. Now there's been a ton of sneakers that have released in December of uh, 2020. So this one, I won't say it flew under the radar because it did sell out, but it did take a while for it to sell out, which is not very common for Yeezys, especially 350 V2. But there's also been a ton of colorways of the silhouette that have released this year as well. So it's probably why this one probably sat for a little while longer than most other uh, 350s that sat so far in 2020 but let's go ahead and look at some details about this sneaker and talk some more about this colorway and uh, what makes this one more unique to some of the other ones that have dropped off so far this year first things first let's take a look at the box so typical box here cardboard brown 350 v2 box 350 uh, branding on the top of it then on the side of it you do have uh, easy boost and also has uh, your sizing label this is something that's a little bit interesting so, so i picked mine up from finish line you guys can see that uh that's the the shipping label and everything right there i'll go ahead and black off my address so you guys can't see that part of it but um these are called the sand topes but they were originally called the eliata and on my box the label you can actually see where the original label was and they put on the new label upside down so very interesting there so uh, the official colorway now says santo 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 and i got these in the size nine you can see that label there now right side up and if you look closely you can see the other label under this one on the, on the box and again i got these right from finish line and they came right out of uh, the box just like this so something a little bit interesting now the eliada name does stand for uh, god knows i believe in hebrew but a lot of these uh, latest easy that did have those um, biblical types of names, they've changed them to be more uh, general. So this is now called the Sand Taupe. Let's look at some details about the sneaker. So typical 350 V2 construction, same shape. You have prime nip all over the upper, but they do have some different colors woven into the prime nip of the sneaker. So it's mostly in like a, a sandish brown color all through it with, with some lighter sand knit weaving through it as well in patterns. And the most interesting part about the sneaker on the lateral side here, you do have this orange or clay color colored stripe. And it's very close to the same color as the Easy 350 V2 clays, which I'll show you guys a little bit later on in the video. But that's the one distinguishing uh, factor about this sneaker. But looking at the toe box there, you can see the stitching, big stitch running down the middle of the sneaker on the toe, straight down here. You have different patterns woven into it. Lateral side, you do have the, uh, the see-through type of mesh stripe right there. And that is see-through. So if you wear darker socks or brighter socks, you can see them to the sneaker medial side some more patterns woven into the prime knit nothing out of the ordinary there rear of the sneaker big stitch running all the way down it all the way up to the top of it then at the bottom the outsole of these is actually in a brown color which i, I kind of like because that's going to show wear a lot better than some of the lighter color outsoles are and it's the same color both on the midsole and the overall outsole where the traction pattern is with the white boost back there at the rear of the sneaker and the boost branding there now you do have a little part of uh, the outsole that rubs up around the back of it and a little bit of a darker brown so you guys can see that there. Also it does come up on the toe box of the sneaker as well. And these do also have the infinity lacy system on them so same color as the sneaker. They do come with spare laces inside of the box. Let's go ahead and pull those out. So they do come with spare laces inside this little package right here. 
and these are a little bit different whereas some of the other ones that have come with spare laces have been the same color as the ones that are in the sneaker except for i want to say the peppers came with uh, red laces the pepper 380s but these actually come with uh, reflective laces so once you hit these with a flash they do reflect which i think is a better touch than the uh infinity laces that are in there but the only thing that sucks is to replace these laces you have to cut them out then put these in there so once you cut these out you can probably put them back together but it would be t a task to do so. so so once i decide if i want to keep these i'll figure out which lacing option i want to go with going forward let's take a look at the insole so once you get that out it is in that same like a uh, sandy color with some adidas and yeezy branding on the rear of it then on the bottom of the insole you guys can see that does have that same track on the bottom of it with some adidas branding there and you also do have these numbers right here at the top of the insole Another detail that I like about 350 V2s is that right here on the back tab, you do have uh, the three stripes right there are in 3M, so they do reflect if you hit them with a flash. And these do not have a pull tab on the rear of the sneaker, like some other 350 V2s have had uh, in the past. And that's pretty much it about details for the sneaker. So let's talk about sizing for 350 V2s. Uh, if you ever owned a Yeezy, you know that 350 V2s always do run small, so I would recommend going up a half size in any 350 V2. This one's no different. I will say though that the, the knit on the uh, primary of this one feels a little bit thinner than some of the other knits that we've seen on some v2s uh, in the past so something to keep in mind if you do plan to wear these in a colder area that your feet will probably get really cold because the knit does feel a little bit thinner and i also wouldn't recommend wearing these in colder weather at, at all because it's more like of a sock like sneaker but if you do plan to grab a pair of these get them at least a half size up whether you have narrow feet white feet doesn't matter go at least a half size up last but not least to talk about the resale value for the sneaker so with there being so many 350 v2s and also a ton of releases coming out in december 2020 you can probably grab these for either right around retail or just a tad bit over retail right now so they don't have a, a ton of resale value so far and honestly most 350 v2s uh, this year have not had resale value coming out the gate but they have gone up in value a little bit over time i think that's more a factor of yeezys being readily available there's always a new pair coming out if not every week every other week so there's tons of different colorways you can you can choose from so they're saturating the market with 350 v2s and i think that's making the the sneaker value go a little bit down which is good if you do plan to uh, pick up a pair and you want to grab a colorway you might have missed you're not going to be paying an arm and a leg for them like you had in the past but for sneaker investors that does kind of suck but personally i usually get my sneakers just to, to rock them so for me that doesn't really bother me and if you do plan to pick these up you shouldn't have to pay too much more of a retail for them just to have these in your collection now something else to discuss uh, do i plan to keep this sneaker now as i mentioned before 350 v2 have been coming out in waves so far in 2020 and honestly the only 350 v2 that i've kept in my collection so far this year has been uh, the breads that we released uh, earlier in december and that's because that's a more of a classic sneaker but all the other ones that have dropped this year i've gotten them i've kept them in hand for a little while i decided i didn't want i didn't need them so let them go and this is one that i'm actually probably leaning more towards keeping because of the colorway i don't have one that's around this colorway in my collection right now i did have the lun marks that dropped in 2019 i recently sold those because i got these and I also do have the clays but I have kept those for a while. I do plan to still keep those. And these do have that same type of orange striker at the top of them. Let me grab those off the shelf so you guys see what those look like. So here are the clays that dropped in 2019. Really unique colorway. Probably one of my favorite colorways of these that have dropped uh, overall, just in general. And you guys can see that strip on the top of the sand topes is almost in the same colorway as the, uh, the clays. Maybe not quite as bright, but definitely um, a nice touch to this sneaker. I think the two colors blend pretty well together. And I think this is a sneaker that you can pretty much pull off anytime from spring to fall to early winter before it gets too cold because the colorway is a pretty versatile color and I actually really like it a lot in hand. But now that we have the details out of the way, let's go ahead and get these both on feet and show you guys how they look. That's going to do it for my review of the Yeezy 350 V2 in the Sand Soap colorway. Let me know what you guys think about uh, this colorway in general and also 350 V2s. Are you completely tired of them? I can say that I am getting a little bit more uh, fatigued by 350 V2s than I had in recent months. So I won't be keeping too many more of them going forward unless they come out with a colorway that pretty much blows my mind, which hasn't really happened. But this one is pretty clean. I do like it a lot and really curious to see what you guys think about this one as well. So let me know down in the comment section down below what you guys think about this sneaker. Also, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Since we have hit 1K subs, we'll be doing a giveaway in the coming days. So 
please make sure to engage with the video right now so that you can become part of the Not Your Average Sneakerhead family and can include any giveaways we have going forward. That's gonna do it for my review. Again, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And this is Not Your Average Sneaker, Tony Ramsey. And I'll catch you guys in my next review. Peace.